Look, I've been in London now for the last 20 years and I, I think I see one star maybe on a good night um, because we just don't have much of a starscape here. But I distinctly remember uh, a trip I took to Botswana and not expecting them. I knew I was gonna see some giraffes and maybe some lions, but we were way out in, 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 in the middle of nowhere. And to see the stars at night there was just like, oh my gosh, wow, this is what maybe my ancestors would look at back in the day. And they might have even taken it for granted. That's right. Every yeah. night, you know, they weren't distracted by HBO yeah. or, you know, any kind of streaming services. When it got dark, it got dark. And what else could you do but look up? And look at how rich the storytelling is that lives among the stars and the constellations and and the movement of the sun, moon, and planets. So the sky was our tapestry of of storytelling. And for that reason, I think it goes very deep within us. There's some hypothesis. I, I didn't verify this with anthropologists, but it's 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 interesting to hypothesize that humans among all animals were actually quite comfortable sleeping on our backs. There aren't many animals at all, certainly not mammals, that will do that. And we sleep at night. So if you are sleeping on your back at night and you happen to wake up and open your eyes, you see the night sky. A turtle goes to sleep, opens its eye, wakes up in night, opens its eyes, it sees the ground. So do ants, so do beetles, so do birds, you know. And so, so our curiosity with the night sky may go way deeper than just some modern fascination now that we have tools to access it. That's an excellent, I've never heard of that thought and theory. That's a good point. And also one thing I learned when I was out in Africa is that, is that everybody's awake at night. Like the freaks come out at night and that's when all the sounds are happening and that's when it's dangerous <laughs> there. Yeah, not all <laughs> creatures are, are daytime creatures. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to sort of nip in the bud, there are many people who visit the Southern hemisphere. They go into the outback of Australia. You were in, the, in uh, desolate areas uh, in Africa. And they look up and they say, oh my gosh, the sky in the Southern Hemisphere is so amazing. And they get jealous. And I'm saying, no, that's not how this works. 90% of the human population lives north of the equator. And most of that population lives in cities where there's light pollution and air pollution and tall buildings. And we don't have a relationship with the night sky. So now I put you into the Southern Hemisphere, where only 10 or 15% of our population lives, and you look up and there's no light pollution and you think it's an inherently better sky. But it's not, all the sky is great. We've just been deprived of it, having to live in the hemisphere where most of the light generating civilization is located. Okay, very well said. And you believe that it's maybe one of the few things that can ultimately unite everyone in the world. Like it's something we have in common. It's something that maybe causes primal feelings. It's something that can show us maybe what we really are. It shows us what's out there. It can show us how small we are. Is that a little bit of kind of what this book is about or some of the thoughts yeah, in this yeah. book? Yeah, I don't know if I want to say I believe it so much that I think it, ha yeah, I guess believe that's the right word, but um, I think the universe and a cosmic perspective has the power to achieve that end. And at, why? Because when you step out of yourself and ascend, not just to get a stratospheric view, because that's the common phrasing when you want to think that way, but we can go a step further and say, what do we look like from the moon? Get a genuine cosmic perspective. And uh, one of the tropes I invoke for the chapters of the book is, what would we look like to aliens? who have no preconceived notion of who and what we are or what we, how, how we view ourselves. And they'd come upon Earth, uh, and that maybe it's in their tourist guide. Oh, we have, there's an Earth, it's got water and <laughs> biodiversity, let's take a look. And they go down to Earth, and but they approach Earth and they see mountains, uh, 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 oceans, land masses, clouds, as nature intends you to see Earth. And then they get closer and they look in classroom windows and they see earth globes in the back of the room that are color coded 
And they say, well, I wonder what that's about. Oh, I know what it's about. We have demarked our landmass, our contiguous landmasses, to know who your enemies are and who your friends are. Yeah, it was on the premise that, oh, this is geography. Well, no, it's the carving up of landmasses that humans have done, the consequence of which, over time and over history, has been warfare, bloodshed. What, what side of a line in the sand do you live on? Were you born on? Who do you worship? Who do you sleep with? How reflective to sunlight is your skin color? We find all ways to divide and conquer ourselves. And this this would look wholly alien to aliens. <laughs> I, can, I can assure you of that. And I'm guessing they would just phone home and say, there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four-week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal, and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.